In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with tessellation patterns. Um, I've drawn here a one unit by one unit box, and that will be the sort of dimension of my tessellation pattern. I'm going to make my current layer layer number one, and I'll begin by making a spline um, along the top of this square. So I'm going to type in spline, and I'll begin snapping to different points. And then I'll make a copy of that spline. And notice I'm snapping from endpoint to endpoint. Right, I'm going to zoom in and check and make sure I hit the endpoints with my spline. Check the left one as well. They look fine. All right, now I'm going to make one along the, the left edge. So I'll type in spline and I'll begin constructing a spline figure. It looks like it's snapped to a, a location that I don't want it to, so I'm going to erase and redo. Spline. Like so. Zoom and check to make sure I'm snapping to the correct points. That looks okay. All right, and then I'll make a copy from this side. Again, snapping from the end point of the square to the other one. Now, it's important that there are not overlaps in your spline. So when I zoom into this corner here, I can see that I have an overlap condition. So I'm going to need to erase this one and edit the one on the left side a little bit so I don't have the overlap condition. I will drag this corner in a little bit, or this grip rather in a little bit and let's try that and see how how it looks snap from end point to end point and that looks like it's going to be okay all right so this is going to be the base unit for my tessellation pattern and you know one thing that's critical is that one side of the pattern exactly matches the other side so that they fit together so these two have to match and these two have to match. Now I would encourage you to, to save your file at this point. Um, now what I'm going to do is this, this tessellation pattern is going to look a little bit like a checkerboard. So my base unit will then become four, you know, like a two by two grid of these. So I'm going to use the copy command and I'm going to make a window and I'm going to snap from the corner of my square to the corner on the right, to the corner above, and again to the right. All right, so I have this four square condition. And then what I'm going to do is fill the patterns with, with fill of different types. Uh, so again, I would highly recommend that you save at this point, because when we do the, um, the hatching patterns, that is a, a point at which you might see that the, the screen locks up on you. All right, so I'm going to turn off the squares in order to do the fill pattern. Um, the non-print layer is the one I want to turn off. Then I'm going to set my current layer to layer number two. And I will do a solid fill hatch pattern. Select solid and click this one and click in this one. Okay. And then in the other two, I'll select um, a non solid pattern to fill with hatch. Uh, before doing that, I'm going to change my layer to layer number three. Go to hatch pattern and you can browse through the possible hatch patterns and select one that you like. We'll go with this Escher pattern. Okay. And I'll fill this one too. Now, the scale of the pattern can be adjusted. Um, if you click on the hatch, 
and you change it. I think it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to reduce it to 0.25. And I'll do the same here. And I'm going to save again by typing in QSave. Okay, now this is going to become the repeated pattern. Um, I will turn back on the non-print layer and that will become part of a block. Okay, I'm going to type in B for block. I'm going to call my block unit 2. I'm going to choose a base point by picking a point. Click here. Select objects. And make a window around everything. Click on OK. Uh, looks like I already have one in there, so I will go ahead and redefine the block. You probably won't get that message. And then, to make this block part of a bigger pattern, I'll use the Array tool. All right, it's going to be a rectangular array. Click on Rectangular, and then you can change the settings to create um, a sort of nested pattern. I'm going to do five rows and five columns, and I'm going to separate them two. All right, so you'll, you'll start to see a pattern form that looks like this. Right, now, if you want to make any changes, you can use the block editor to do this. I'll turn off the non-print layer just to see uh, what it might look like when it's printed. Here it is.